do that as we go. Don't simply give people a few peanuts later on in life. Simply change the entire system so you don't make $33 billion, right? So what to do about wealth? What to do about inequality? This is a huge issue during the progressive era. Look in your notes, okay? Review this again in your mind. The masculine way versus the feminine way. The feminine way, the social gospel. Washington Gladden, Walter Rauschenbusch. Okay? The idea that less individual concern, more about the condition of our soul as a society. Okay? The idea that Jesus will take care of the poor. They get the preferential option. On the other hand, the masculine point of view. Amos Alonzo Stagg, Theodore Roosevelt. Billy Sunday. Have you guys ever heard of Billy Sunday? Billy Sunday was a famous preacher back in like 1901. He was a former professional baseball player who became an, became an evangelical Christian. At the beginning of his show, he'd actually run on stage, on the wood stage. He'd run out there and slide in there and say, he'd say, the devil said I was out, but Jesus said I was safe. Right? <laughs> he was a very dynamic, colorful guy who'd jump around on stage. Don't entertaining to watch. Yeah, yeah, Billy Sunday, a, the, a Christian minister at this time. The opportunity to attain great wealth is within the reach of almost every man and woman. Obviously, the gospel of wealth. Let us remember, there is not a poor person in the United States who was not made poor by his own shortcomings. It is all wrong to be poor, anyhow. The Reverend Russell H. Conwell. This is a speech called Acres of Diamonds that he gave in hundreds of times. If you're poor, it's your own individual fault. Okay? If you're a good Christian, if you work hard, you are bound to be successful in the United States of America. On the other hand, I can see, for example, thank you, Brenda. How are you? Hi. Yeah, for two of us. All right, little Luz. For example, a sociologist. Sociology is the study of how institutions affect people. Sociologists will sit there and say you have to look at the, you can't sit there and hold individuals accountable for their poverty. You have to look at the social system, the social dynamic which produces the situation they come out of. You can't actually change individuals until you change the social dynamic, right? That's the, the other point of view, the more modern view of poverty. So, okay, again, does anyone have any questions with regard? This is kind of a complicated point of view. Please ask questions to clarify whatever is not totally there. Because it seems to me like it's easy to sit there and say, oh, the Northern Security Supreme Court case said this. But these are more complicated things which you'll need for the DBQs in terms of explaining values and right versus wrong and various, various conversations. Yeah? Which one had more effects? Like which one <coughs> Good question. Ones? And I think the answer is <sighs> these people were so different, and they're coming from such different points of view. In a sense, they're kind of talking past each other, mm -hmm. right? And I think in the end, these people here, probably had more power in the short term, but these arguments in the long term were making inroads. So I would sit there and say, in the end, Hamilton versus Jefferson, which one was more powerful? They both were. And it was like a little bit like this maybe, Amanda. The country would tilt a little bit more this way, and then tilt a little bit more this way, right? And, and, and past a certain point, they never got too far from the center as these people began to continue to argue again and again and again. The next major Socratic seminar thing you're gonna have in this class is dealing with yeah, we're going to have two major ones where you'll have an entire class that's going to talk about two different subjects. And the first one we talk about, what does it mean to be an American? What does it mean to be a Mexican-American or an African-American or a Chinese-American? And we'll talk about the idea of what does it mean to be an American. And a lot of people will sit there and say, you know, being American means to wear tennis shoes and jeans or to listen to music on your Walkman, your iPod, right? But you go overseas, people sit there and say, you know, I, I, I had students who were like, you know, Korean-American, and they go to Korea, and they're like, oh, I can talk with these people here. And they're like, oh, you're American. You're not really that Korean. Right? They can just tell you're in the United, from the United States. Nah. No? No. You don't think if I took Emily to, the, to Korea? Sit there and say, no, oh. Emily, is, Emily cannot <coughs> speak like You think if I took Linda Luce? <laughs> Linda Luce? From what part of Mexico is your family? Uh, Jalisco. If you went down to Jalisco, okay, and you're speaking you know, fluent Spanish, would they still know you're American? Yeah. 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 And what does it mean to be an American? You know, a lot of people sit there and say, well, it's about like, liking rap music or things like that. I would argue to be an American means to understand these debates about what it means to be an American. 
Okay, in terms of being this or being that, the poverty or the wealth, or the local and states' rights versus the federal concern, or being about the spiritual, like Thoreau and wanting to go be, you know, hang out by yourself on a mountaintop, or being a person who really does want to go ahead and have the latest Lexus with a great, you know. So idealistic American or the general American? Kind of a materialistic American versus a more, you know, a more... Like, uh, like ideal American. Exactly. Okay. Okay, well, we'll get there in a, few, in a, in a couple of weeks there. American All right. Not so much American except for what we're talking about. Well, that's like general American. Yeah, American.